Take it over. Cool. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is John Otto from Actor Spaces. And Actor Spaces is basically a platform that just celebrates all things television, film, and theater, most especially actors within that, those industries. Um, just wanted to say congratulations on getting this movie, filming it, and finishing it. How are you feeling and how are you preparing for the premiere? Thank you, John. Um, I'm going to let the ladies be first. I just want to say thank you and hi. Hi. Okay. Thanks for supporting our industry. Yeah. 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 Like, we yeah. love what yeah. you Active do. Active Spaces is amazing. Friends. Thank, thank you. you. Obviously, we're fans. Yeah. <laughs> of you. Of yeah. Us. So, um, how are you preparing? Preparing. For the premiere and how are you feeling about right. it coming finally? I'm so excited. Me too. Honestly. Right? Yeah. Especially because of the people. Yeah. Right. I mean, we're just getting our outfits, I guess, ready for yeah. the big day tomorrow. Um, that's the first thing, getting that right, because you want to you want to <laughs> yeah. feel right, because you look right, and then you can enjoy the rest of the evening. I'm I'm looking forward to the whole world seeing this film, mm. you know. Yeah, and it's well, it's my first premiere since lockdown and COVID yeah. and definitely. everything, so it's definitely a top, you know, experience of the year. Yeah, yeah. kind it's of exciting. thing. Probably the most exciting thing that we've done um, in a while. Except for filming, this is amazing. Of course, yes, that's the first yeah. one, and now. Uh, awesome, and also then. How, what's the uh, one thing that you're most anticipating about the film? Mm. Well, I guess... <laughs> We're like, he's going to Yeah, he's going to um, okay. Well, for me, I'm just really excited for people to know about the story. I think many of us can say mm -hmm. that prior to, you know, stepping onto this project, we didn't know um, about the events that happened in 1980. Um, so I'm excited for South Africans, for the world, for Africans to, to see the story, hear the story. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we can pay homage to these incredible yeah. um, men and everyone that was involved, you know? Mm, yeah. yeah. I'm quite excited for the discussions that it hopefully will spark, spark mm. yeah, amongst mm. people. Because it d definitely feels like a film um, where you want to discuss it afterwards. Definitely. Um, about, like, why did this happen? Do you, how do you feel about that? And it's not just, like, a feel-good mm. vibe, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like what you guys are saying because I'm going to say like something totally shallow. I'm, <laughs> I'm excited for people to see an exciting, super entertaining film with mm. really amazing performances mm. and like expert directing. Mm. It's so great to see a film come out of this country where we're given all the tools and, and everyone on it delivers, man. That's exciting mm. for me, just yeah. being in the industry for people to see that. Yeah. We're capable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to me, sure, you know, having done countless biopics before this as well, yeah. even though this might not be a <clears throat> direct biopic, but it is one. What, what made you choose this project and say, okay, I'm going to dive back into this kind of genre of storytelling? I really wanted to work with Mandla Dube. Um, I just think he's a really fantastic uh, director. And he, mm. he, the last thing that, that, that I saw that he did was Kalushi. And when this came out and it was like a Mandla Dube movie, I was like, I don't care what he's doing, just sign me up. But the storyline was also very interesting because of, I think, um, the subject matter. And it lends itself to being a great commercial film. That is, mm. that is historically re relevant. Mm. And how did you prepare your character differently this time compared to before when you, know, when you had done other biopics? I think with this one, every biopic I've done, I've played like a, a great hero or, or a fantastic human being, you know, who's being celebrated. With this one, I played a villain, you know. So I wanted him not to be liked. I wanted you, the first time you see this guy, not to even like, like him but at the same time see his huma human side his humanity so preparing for it was just getting to look back in the archives of history of what someone like this what it would have taken for him to just be a helicopter pilot mm -hmm. in the south african air force in 1980. Mm -hmm. okay also and michelle and you guys are from pretoria as well mm -hmm. uh, or surrounding areas but you did grow up in pretoria what so and this story is set in Pretoria as well uh, might not be the same places but what influences from you know your upbringing or your hometowns did you put into your characters okay. uh, <laughs> um for me um obviously the space was very familiar but the set was 1980 mm -hmm. so in a way it was also completely different to what i'd known um for me i grew up in the new South Africa and with a, a very almost I think naive idea of what apartheid was mm. um, 
because I didn't really, I wasn't raised in a space where racism was mm. ever a thing. And doing this film, I realized it was a very real thing. Um, so I think preparing for this film was mainly like realizing how serious and how intense it was because I'm privileged enough to have been to come after that and to and to have different relationships that I now realize I wouldn't have had had I been born in that time mm. so yeah it was really an eye-opening experience for me yeah um I mean I'm from Mabul Bani which is where Calvin is from so um yeah that that was an amazing like relation I was like hey I know that place I'm from there um but yeah I mean I grew up there and you know you can you feel community and you feel um you know your neighbors are right next to you you know everybody knows each other and and um that kind of uh, connection and community is something that I think has always been in me and something that I did draw from as well um and yeah, I went to school in Pretoria as well, so uh, I understand Pretoria. I know exactly where we, when we were shooting, I knew exactly where we were. Um, so it felt very familiar. Um, but as Alani is saying, you know, the story is set in a time that, you know, we weren't physically present, but uh, the reality of that time is still very present um, in Pretoria as well. You know, you mm -hmm. feel it depending on where you are. Um, so yeah, it just, you needed to kind of put on those very introspective goggles and and look even in a space that's familiar to you what exactly is going on here what are the dynamics of the people today and what would it look like before i remember um our director mandla telling us that you know this story is most important because it happened in the heart of the apartheid regime which was pretoria you know so he really created a world um an amazing world a colorful world for us to step into and give life to our characters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, when they say race is a construct, they speak about your character, Michelle, you know, yeah. like she's, she's a passing in a way, you yes, know. Yes. Um, I just wanted to ask you, what kind of research did you go into about, you know, the, we all know about the passing experience in America, yes, yes. but we haven't really explored the passing experience in apartheid South Africa. Right, right. So what research did you go into just to understand your character from that perspective? Yeah, um, I mean, I've done a lot of intensive research just about passing colorism as you say um in south africa it was quite interesting to me because i'd never heard of that before so but i spoke with my dad who was quite involved he's a politician as well and involved in like that kind of world um and gave me quite a lot of insight i mean we had like pass laws you know so it was very difficult to move around and and kind of pretend to be somebody else you know so um my main aim was bringing believability to the story um and i think the believability came in with uh, us making her uh, be adopted by white parents because my dad was like if that if we move with that then she would kind of take on their identity um, <clears throat> and I imagine them also to be quite powerful people that would be able to maneuver you know um, in spaces that maybe um, not everybody would if they were if they had adopted a black child um, but yeah I think that uh, my own lived experience is also uh, I wouldn't say a testament of passing, but um, gives me a unique perspective on passing in South Africa because it's not a decision that I obviously make. I'm a black woman and I'm very proud of that. But the way society may see me, um, they, you know, some people would often think that, oh, you're, you're white or you're trying to be white, you know, um, which is not the truth. But because of the way I look and I guess proximity to whiteness that, you know, that that's kind of the assumption that people would make. So, I mean, just drawing from everything from, you know, books and interviews, my own lived experience, uh, my dad, my parents, my friends. It was just uh, an amalgamation of, of information. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, you know, for all of you guys, what would you say is one thing that your character has taught you throughout this journey? Hmm. Wow. Um, I think what my character taught me was that you are the sum total of your choices in life. But you can always choose differently, no matter how far you've gone down that road of choices. So choose every day to choose what's best, not only for yourself, but everyone else. Because sometimes we only choose for ourselves, but always choose what's best for the people around you. Mm -hmm. I'll go next, we'll yeah. go <laughs> um, One of the biggest things my character has taught me is that strength can look different in different people. Um, you don't necessarily have to be the, 
you know, fighter have the metaphorical guns and, you know, fight in that way to fight and stand up for what's right. Um, I think that's probably something that I had never experienced really before because we get taught being strong looks like this, being weak looks like this. And there's ways to be strong and stand within yourself without having to force yourself to be someone that you're not. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, having a new perspective on strength mm -hmm. is one of the biggest things Christina's taught me. Um, I think there are many things Rachel has taught me, but maybe the, the one that stands out is how beautifully complex we are as black people. Um, I think she's taught me um, to be proud. I mean, I, I am, but I think even <laughs> prouder of who I am and, and more so just um, being someone who understands that as people as well, that we are so uniquely complex and that, um, you know, there's so much more to us than what we look like and that our identity should not be, um, you know, based on what other people say about us, um, that we should be more caring and and accepting and also just understanding that each and every one of us are, are worthy of our dreams, are worthy of mm. uh, taking up space. Um, yeah, I think that's that's probably the main the main thing she's she's taught me. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, can I just have one more request? Uh, oh, is it done? Oh, oh, okay, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> no worries. Thank, Thank you, you very you much. Oh, you Thank, Thank you. John, thanks, man. Sorry. Hope you have Appreciate a good you. time, yeah. good day. Yeah. Thank, well you. Going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. <clears throat> Cut.